Good afternoon. I'm a researcher at the uh, University of Computer Science of Turin, uh, mainly in doing research on programming languages, uh, both on theory and implementation. I'm also a consultant at ITEMIS, and this is a work uh, done uh, in cooperation with uh, RCP Vision, Francesco Guidieri and Vincenzo. So as Vincenzo already said, uh, these framework was previously called EMF Components. We recently uh, submitted it as a, an Eclipse project. It's under approval. And we decided to give it another name, probably more interesting. Uh, so uh, we call this framework now uh, EMF Parsley. Unfortunately, we are doing the refactoring uh, right these days. So probably during the presentation and in the demo, uh, you will still see uh, EMF components somewhere, but we are working on that. So um, the motivations behind this framework, um, let's say a problem when you write EMF application, especially when you have to set up a viewer to use an EMF model, is that you have to write some boilerplate code, which is very recurrent. And so we would like to hide these internal details and make it easier to just set up a viewer with an EMF model. And we would also like to have uh, a kind of a smaller way of doing customizations of the several aspects of uh, an EMF application. So our proposal, uh, EMF Partly, is a lightweight framework with many small reusable components, so we do not provide a way to build an application from scratch. You still need to build your RCP or uh, Eclipse plugin yourself, but then you can reuse in, in your plugin or in your application quite easily these components, which are based on any uh, EMF um, persistence um, layer, basically, so XMI, TNEO, or CDO. And you can customize uh, quite easily every aspect of these components. We also, uh, you can do that in Java, but we also provide a DSL to make the customization uh, even easier. So the idea is that we have many small classes, and each class um, takes care of a, a specific aspect. So if you want to customize an aspect, you just have to customize that class. Basically, uh, using this framework, you will never, uh, usually, you will never have to inherit from a, uh, an editor just to uh, override a method. So you just use our editor and you inject your uh, customization. We use, uh, as the dependency injection framework, Google Juice to, to have a dependency injections. And, um, Actually, you, you can still use the uh, standard way of uh, providing bindings, but uh, we are using the X-text way of uh, providing custom Jewish bindings. So it's a, an easier way to, um, to specify uh, custom Jewish bindings. As we will see, if you're using the DSL, you don't have to care about these uh, aspects. So what we provide, we provide uh, some components, some widgets, some viewers, which, as I said, are fine-grained components that you can reuse in your application. But we also provide some parts, like editors or views, which already uh, use uh, these components. Especially for views, we provide, for instance, savable views, which are based on EMF resources or views based on selections, because we often use these kinds of views in our applications. You can see these parts also as a kind of reference implementations. So as I said, if you don't want to use our views, you can just use our components in your parts uh, any way you want. Um, so this is just an example. Um, if, you, if you want to, uh, to set up a viewer, all you have to do is to inject the initializer for the viewer, create your tree viewer, as you, you always do, and just call a method. That's all. You have to pass a resource or any object. And the framework will do all the rest. Okay? So just two lines of code. Similarly, we have um, forms based on EMF models. 
And also in this case, it's just a matter of injecting the factory and two method calls, and that's all. You just need to pass the object. The framework will do all the rest. And of course, since we use injection everywhere, if you want to customize one aspect, you just take care of that aspect and customize that particular aspect. So what you get um, are standard um, components in Eclipse, but you can customize, as I said, every aspect, labels, the contents of the viewers, uh, descriptions, level, basically any, anything, both from the UI side and uh, from the behavioral side. Again, we borrow from Xtext the their nice way of uh, customizing based on polymorphic dispatch methods. So if I want to customize the text of a book, I just have to declare this method. And internally, the framework we use will use polymorphic dispatch mechanism to select that method at runtime according to the runtime type of the objects. So you just have to write these methods. Also for images, you just need to specify uh, the name of your image file, and the framework will do all the rest. So as I said, if you have a custom, custom class, you just need to inject it to, to specify the juice binding to inject it in the framework. Again, if you're using the DSL, as we will see in a minute, uh, you don't have to care about uh, juice bindings. We will do that for you. As I said, we have a DSL implemented in Xtext. Uh, we also use Xbase. Um, <clears throat> does anybody of you know Xbase? Of course. <laughs> so uh, just a few words. Uh, Xbase is one of the cool things that Xtext provides you. It's a, a reusable expression language that you can embed in your DSL. And this language is completely integrated with, the, with Java and with Java type system. If you recall uh, the presentation of Jan about extend, basically you have the same uh, expressions that you have in extend. And actually extend reuses Xbase as well. So you have a, a rich uh, and powerful expression language completely integrated with Java with all the type inferences you said you, you saw in Extend and uh, with closures, for instance, and completely integrated with Java type system also from the tooling point of view. And from this DSL, we generate all the Java code. And you only have to edit one file, and we'll generate all the Java classes for you, and also the Jewish binding. We use the generation gap pattern, so uh, we generate in a specific gem folder, but you can also uh, customize the generated f uh, Java classes just by inheriting and putting in your source folder. We will not, regen we will not touch those files. Um, another good thing of Xbase, uh, I don't remember whether Jan told that, but also in Extend you can uh, debug um, directly the extend code. So you run your Java application, but you can debug the extend code. And the same holds if you're using Xbase. So all these um, uh, modules of our DSL can be debugged directly, okay? And we uh, have many static type checks, so we take care of checking whether you spell anything correctly. So if you spell a feature name um, and that feature does not belong to this class, you, you soon have uh, an immediate feedback. Uh, we also have a version of EMF Puzzly which works with wrap. This is an example. Uh, basically, we implemented this application uh, in Eclipse, and then we simply targeted to the wrap version of EMF Puzzly, and you have a web application. So we, you can uh, have single sources also when using um, EMF Parsley. Now um, we have not a real demo but uh, a video which shows uh, an example of use of EMF Parsley, in particular using the DSL. What we want to do is to uh, implement uh, the RCP mail application using EMF and EMF Parsley. So um, 
we start, uh, of course, with a meta model, EMF meta model. Uh, this is not very interesting. It's a standard uh, EMF meta model for our main model with an account. Folders, folders can have subfolders, and uh, folders can have mails. And each mail contains a message, uh, sender, recipient, and so on. So we first create uh, the tree view for the uh, accounts. We have a project wizard that already creates a project with some uh, stub code, and um, it also creates um, a DSL program. So now what we do is, to, is we create a Java class which uses one of our view classes. This is a savable uh, view, so it's based on resource, and you have to specify the URI of the resource. Uh, for this demo, we simply use um, a resource in the local file system, but we could use CDO as well. Once we've done that, if we run the application, oh, we, we need first to uh, specify um, the part that we are using. We do that in the DSL, and that the DSL will create the Eclipse extension point for you. It will also take care of <coughs> connecting the extension point with the Jewish um, injection mechanism. So we are now ready to run the application. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Um, as I said, you are not bound to using the DSL completely. If you want to specify a custom Java class, you can still do that and specify that Java class in the Jewish module. So you can use our DSL in conjunction with uh, Java. And here we simply participate to the initialization of an empty resource. So we put some data on, the, on our model. And here we go, we have um, a tree view. Uh, the first thing we uh, want to customize is the way the contents are uh, shown. Um, of course, this is the default behavior, so uh, the tree shows all the contents following the containment relation. But we don't want to see uh, the mail in a folder here in this view because then we have a view for showing the mail. So we uh, customize the content provider and we do that in the DSL. <clears throat> we, say that, we say that for a, a folder object, and as I said, since we're using XBase, this is a, a Java type. Hmm? So for a folder object, you, uh, we want only uh, the subfolders as its children. Again, this is X base, so you have code completion and you have all the Java tooling. So with this change, if we run the application again, you see that the mail are not shown in the tree just by writing three lines of code in our DSL. Now we want to do some customizations for the labels, and we do that in the DSL. And we can specify the names of the um, image file we have in our plugin project. Note that you, here you can specify any XBase code block. And again, this is all statically typed, so name is a field in the folder type and we can show a different image depending on the name of the folder object. As I say, these are names of files that we put in our plugin project. We uh, run the application again. And now we have some nice Icon. Now we also want to customize the text for the elements of the tree. And again, we can simply say that an account, for an account we only want to show the email feature and for the folder just the name feature. If we run the application again, now you see the labels are changed. 
Now we create uh, another view, the view for uh, the mail objects. We again create another project, because in this project we use an, a different Jewish module. And uh, we create a Java class, which is based on uh, um, a view which reacts on selection and shows a table. For these views, you just have to say uh, the class of the objects that you want to show. In our case, we want to show male objects. And you have to specify the feature in the class of the selected object which contains those objects. So we are interested in the uh, folder mails feature. Probably this method is redundant because you can get the type from the feature, but the API is still provisional. So, <clears throat> again, let me skip this part since you already saw that. If we run the application, now we have uh, a table view which shows uh, the mails which are selected from the, which are contained in the selected folder. Note that by default the table shows uh, a column for every feature of the selected object and we want to uh, change the uh, headers and the contents of the tables. We do that in the DSL by specifying the features for uh, that specific type. Again, this is all uh, statically typed, so we say that for a mail object, we want the subject and the from field in this order. We run the application again, and this time we only have the subject and the from fields. Now we create the final view for uh, the messages. Again, we use the project wizard, and we use another view based on selection, which shows a form. We specify the type of the elements that we want to show. We want to show <coughs> a male object in a form. Again, we specify the part. Let's run the application. And now we have a form which reacts on selection. We want now to, uh, of course, this is the default behavior. It shows every feature of the selected object. We want to customize the title for the, uh, for the form. The form uses a label provider, so we just need to specify a custom label provider with a custom image. The name of the image file and the textual representation we want to show the subject. And here's the uh, new title. Of course, now the subject here in the form is redundant, so we will, we will remove that feature from the form. We specify that the features that have to be shown for an, a male object are just the uh, from method, the from feature, recipients, and the message. And now they are shown in this order, and the subject is not there anymore. We can also uh, customize the uh, description of the feature. So instead of showing recipients, we show two. And now the label has changed. Finally, we can customize um, all the uh, controls that are created in the form for your feature. So we want to, uh, for the message feature of the mail object, we want to, instead of showing a text edit, we want to uh, show a text area. Again, this is X-based code. 
these toolkit and parent uh, variables are automatically provided in the body of this expression. And you can basically create any control from the toolkit. And since these use data binding, you can also uh, specify uh, all the data binding uh, features like the target observable. Okay, now if we run the application again, we have a text area for the message. So you see we concent you can concentrate on uh, very small aspects and the framework will do all the rest for you. Um, so let me conclude uh, the presentation. Some, some links, as I said, we propose it, this framework as an Eclipse project. These are the links for following the proposal, the approval stage. Uh, the current implementation is still in the Google Code uh, repository. Hopefully, it will migrate to Eclipse soon. And there's also a discussion thread. Uh, we would like to, th to thank Ed Merckx and Ike Stepper for suggesting to propose it as an Eclipse project and for mentoring the proposal. And thanks for listening.